few hundred demonstrators here in support of abortion rights. Uh, Protests are in reaction to new abortion laws passed recently. The most restrictive abortion bill in the country. This abortion would be criminalized in Alabama, made a felony, and the way the law is written, it would punish doctors who perform them with up to 99 years in prison. The only exception would be if the mother's life were in danger. In the summer of 2019, abortion was banned in the state of Alabama. Many southern states followed suit, amplifying the deep-rooted controversy surrounding the topic. Just two decades prior, a woman's rights to abortion were challenged in Webster versus Reproductive Health Services, and her constitutional rights were eventually deemed violated by the Supreme Court. This case led to a gigantic increase in the amount of children in foster care, and an unsurprisingly sharp decrease in the amount of abortions done. However, this does not mean that the amount of abortions decreases, only the amount of safe abortions performed in a clinic do. A striking parallel exists between 1989 and 2019 statistics on teen pregnancy and mandatory sex education. The amount of children in foster care spiked from 1989 to 2014 compared to 1973 to 1989, which happened to be the period after Roe v. Wade and after Webster v. Reproductive Health Services. We reached out to Dr. Addy, an obstetrician gynecologist, in order to better our understanding of what drives the stigma surrounding abortions. I think that the label of being reckless and careless and irresponsible, I, that in itself is a stigma. And I think that a lot of, um, a lot of people put that on women who choose to have an abortion. Most people don't make the decision lightly. So they don't regret it. They've thought it through and they've done all of their due diligence on making sure it was the right decision for them. With more knowledge at our disposal, we decided to unpack the misconceptions surrounding the choice to have an abortion in more depth. We still wondered why abortion is so stigmatized, and we found that in America, states that don't have mandatory sex education have pregnancy rates that are twice as high as states that do have mandatory sex education. We chose to speak with Mrs. Alves, a health teacher at Saratoga High, to answer the question of whether sex education should be mandatory in schools or not. Sex education, it's something that students aren't really comfortable talking about with their parents or their teachers, so they come into this class with a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of lack of knowledge. Um, people have heard things from classmates, so you can't get pregnant the first time you have sex, and so they want to know, is that really true? Is that not true? Um, things like that. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and students don't actually know the facts. And again, we're trying to keep students safe. I can't control what people are going to choose. It's their own choice, but I want to make sure they have all of the information necessary to make the choice that's right for them. This gave us the idea to reach out to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is often stigmatized as an abortion clinic. But in reality, it provides a large array of services and resources. However, recently, Congress announced that they will defund Planned Parenthood by $6 million, even though contraceptive services provided by Planned Parenthood prevent approximately 579,000 unintended pregnancies annually. However, on February 25, 2016, our president stated that... But they have millions of women going through Planned Parenthood that are helped greatly. And I wouldn't fund it. I would defund it because of the abortion factor, which they say is 3 percent. I don't know what percentage it is. They say it's 3 percent. But I would defund it because I'm pro-life. But millions of women are helped by Planned Parenthood. Even people in high positions of power do not completely understand the importance that healthcare organizations such as Planned Parenthood have by preventing pregnancies by supplying people with contraceptives and providing multiple healthcare screenings. This miseducation and carelessness of those in power leads to large amounts of defunding, such as that of recently. Unfortunately, things are moving backwards for women. However, you can help by donating to Planned Parenthood and writing to your local offices about the importance of mandatory sex education.